Hello students, this is Dr. Singhal. I'm here once again to talk to you about a topic called C++ function name overloading. So we'll get together with that and see what this technology is all about and how you can use that in C++. Basically, names of objects such as functions are very important in the software industry. Uh, <clears throat> In fact, it would not be an exaggeration to say that in software industry, as much thought goes into choosing the names of functions and other software objects as parents put into choosing their, the name of their children. And this is actually true. Thus, choosing intuitive and meaningful yet concise names allow programmers to discuss functions at lunch table evening coffee or anywhere else formally or informally if that didn't happen they could not choose uh, they could not really talk about functions and other objects that easily uh, function names are part of programmers and software engineers professional discourse discourse means you are part of some community of professionals if you cannot talk about things they talk about then you're not part of the discourse okay okay so since so much effort goes into choosing names the number of universally qualified function names are actually not in unlimited supply there is a limitation on the number of names that we have Therefore, programmers may like to reuse the same function name for all those functions that execute similar algorithm in a program. Uh, you could have a similar algorithm applied to different set of data, and they will all execute the same algorithm. It would be a programmer or software engineer's desire to use the same name for many functions. And the technology for using same name for many functions is called function name overloading and C++ allows you to choose same name for many functions that execute the similar algorithm. That will be more meaningful of course uh, by technology called a function name overloading. All, almost, almost all modern programming language use function name overloading. Okay, the question is why should we do function name overloading? Well, imagine that in a software application, the values of data stored in two different memory locations need to be swapped. And this may be needed to sort a collection such an array. It could be that you have, and I don't have a drawing here, that one element in one array here, another one here, and you need to swap these values uh, when you sort the array. So in such application, if data were to be swapped, depending upon what kind of array you're working with, what pair of integers, another set of data, pair of doubles, another set of data, pair of characters, and yet another is string, then one way you could write and do that is that you have four functions like below each usable which will show up in a second actually they're right here each usable for data type passed to that function is an argument so to, to swap integers we can use a function like this swap ints and then we are passing it by reference to integers x and y and after the function is finished x will have value of y and y will have value of x before the function call. And if we wanted to swap two pieces of data like a double x and double y, then a function like swap doubles can do that, uh, although they will be executing same algorithm. And if I wanted to swap two characters located into two different parts of memory, this one and this one, then after swap charge is completed, x will have the value that y used to have and y will have the value that x used to have. 
and to swap strings I can have two functions uh, a function like this one swap strings uh, so that before uh, calling this function whatever the value of x was there it swaps to y and whatever value y was there it swaps to x so this is one approach that we can have four functions with four different names and because the data type is different and although they will be executing the same algorithm okay but there is a problem with this approach uh, and the problem is as follows all four functions that we had a minute ago all these functions will have same algorithm and the problem is that generally software engineers like to pair one function name with all the functions that execute same algorithm so in previous case we had four names but really what software engineers like to do they like to use really pair the algorithm with the function name with the same algorithm with the same function name And the reason for that is that you can talk about the algorithm then. You don't have to talk about each function separately. If any modification has to be made, you can just talk about the modification to the algorithm. But having four different names for functions that would be executing the same algorithm is confusing and burdensome. It could create problems. Thanks to the function name overloading, one name will suffice. Okay? So and this is shown in the next slide so what happens in C++ C++ will accept the four below functions as being different functions even though they all have the same name called swap one of these this is by the, the header line as well as the prototype uh, if I see the whole line, that's prototype. But if I just see only up to here, that's header. So first function is swap. And of course, it still takes integers x and y by value. But with the same function in the same program, this, this function called swap can also coexist. But it's taking a double x and double y as an argument. And with these two, this third one can coexist, swap character pass by reference x, character pass by reference y. So all three have same name, but they can all be in the same program because of function name overloading. And the fourth one could be like this, that same name as these three, but it takes a string x and a string y as an argument. Okay. So the reason C++ will allow all four functions to have same name is that although their names are same, but their signatures are different. So now we want to talk about what the function signatures are. Okay, so signature of function constitutes the following elements or following components. One of the part of the signature of function is the function name. Notice return type is not part of the function name. Okay. Second element is number of parameters passed to the function. And third element is order and data type of formal parameters. Okay. So these three constitute function signature. And C++ only requires that all functions in the same program should have different signatures. Their names don't have to be same. It only looks for the signatures. And with the function with the same name can have differences in item 2 or item 3 here to make their signatures distinguishable as far as C++ is concerned from each other. And signatures of four swap functions are actually different. And why are they different? We'll just show you in a second. That's because although name is same, the, num the type of parameter each one is taking is different. Each one is taking two parameters, but the data type of each one is different. And therefore, 
when these four functions are present in the same program, it will allow C++ to distinguish by the actual data being passed at the runtime, whether this function was called, whether this was called, whether this was called, or this was called. Okay. So C++ will be able to make correct function call and the actual argument, an actual function to call pairing. All right. And we'll demo that in Xcode and or in some other compiler. What I'm going to do is just kind of show you the program first in this video. But in the part two, I'll actually go through the debugger and show you step by step everything. So let's go to Xcode now. So here's the Xcode, and here's the four functions that we did in Xcode. Swap, taking two integers as an argument. Swap, taking two doubles as an argument. Swap, taking two characters as an argument. And swap, taking two strings as an argument. OK. Uh, we're going to skip main just for a second and go to these four functions one by one and you'll see that algorithm in each one of them is identical see so here I'm using the swap that has two integers and argument both by reference and the algorithm is very simple that I save x value inside a temporary holding place called temp and since I already saved this value I could do my first swap so this is my first swap, actually. Where I swapped value of y into x. And then since temp was containing x already, I can swap into y the value of x that I saved into temp. Notice when I go to next function, swap double, Algorithm is identical. See, nothing has changed in these two lines of codes or even in this line of code. Only thing that has changed is the data type. So this algorithm and this algorithm is identical. And same thing when we swap two characters. Algorithm is identical to the above two. And same thing here. When we swap two strings, algorithm is identical. And in all cases, we are passing by reference. OK? So I'm just going to demo in this one a simple running of, uh, actually, let's go to the main function. Maybe I should explain that, how that works. And then we'll come back into the part two of this video and complete the demo of Xcode in this one, in that one. So in first part of the main, what I have is I have value val1 as 5 and val2 as 10. And then I call the swap function val1 and val2. And if swap does take place after or in this line, val1 will have value of 10 because value got swapped. And val2 will have value of 5 because the swap was actually successful. All right. So uh, I'm going to run in the next slide the part 2. Uh, this whole program for all the four functions to show you that uh, over here we are calling the swap with integer values over here we are calling the swap with the double values these are two double values here uh, over here I'm calling swap with the two character values and over here I'm gonna call the swap with two string value but nevertheless uh, C++ knows that if this call is made over here, it should call this function. And if this call is made here, then it sh should call this function. And we're going to actually go into debugger and show you step by step. So see you in the part two of function name overloading. I'll be back. Thank you.